All right, a couple of major things that uh, the elders have asked me to share, and, um, and I'm excited to share with you. First of all, uh, regarding our doctrinal statement, uh, we are proposing to you a significant expansion of our doctrinal statement. Let me first of all say that we are not changing a single doctrine of our church or what we believe and teach. But let me give you a little background as to why this is an issue. Our original doctrinal statement was based on a generic template. When the church began, there was a template around in the area here in the Dallas area, and uh, that's where our doctrinal statement started. Through the years, um, we have tried to strengthen that doctrinal statement, uh, the wording of some things, and so forth, to reflect what the church believes and teaches. As we proceed with church planting, however, the elders have become increasingly convinced that we need a clear and comprehensive doctrinal statement, one that is definitive, that's clear not only um, for the church's sake, but for those who come. And it becomes a clear point of saying, this is, this is what we believe as a church. And so the elders, once we landed on that and felt that was important, we had a choice of several directions we could go. We could simply step back and try to extensively rewrite our current statement. We could take a fresh start with a clean piece of paper and just begin to write. Or we could find an existing doctrinal statement that we felt had our doctrine and that we could then work through and strengthen and refine to reflect exactly our own hearts and the heart of our church. And the elders decided to adapt an existing statement. It's the statement of Grace Community Church in California. And, and so we started with that. Now here's what we did. Over the last year, this has been a long process, we have individually reviewed and edited each section of that doctrinal statement, one section at a time. Then the elder board would come together, discuss those sections and those suggested changes, and approve every single edit in every section, and then reread and approve every completed section. So once we'd work through it over a couple of elders meetings, we'd go back over it and approve it together. Then once we finished the entire document, we reviewed and approved the final statement. That proposed expanded version is now available for your review. Um, it'll be available in two ways. For most of you, we're assuming that you will access it online on our website. It will be there tomorrow. For those of you who are digitally challenged, and we didn't make a lot of copies, so don't everyone grab one, but if you're in that category where you'd really rather not do it online, there are some copies out at the Welcome Center as you leave tonight. Um, now, this is one of the items in our church constitution that calls for a member vote, and that is our doctrinal statement. And by the way, that is, we're an elder-led church. We believe that's what the Bible teaches, but this is for the protection of the church so that you don't have a rogue elder board leading the church somewhere different doctrinally. They make all of those decisions and change the entire direction of the church. Instead, the church has to affirm the doctrinal statement. Again, you won't find one single thing in this doctrinal statement that is different than what we have taught and what we have believed, but it's just an expanded version. We feel that's healthy both for the church, for the future, our own church, as well as for the plant. So we encourage you to read that, and then we will have a vote, as the Constitution calls for, on Sunday night, February 24th. So hopefully you'll have time to review it, and then we'll have a vote on that Sunday night. If you have questions about any of that, of course, you can see any of the elders. would be happy to, to answer any questions you might have about that process and that project.